Thank you for joining Brothers of the Word, because brother, you need the word. We welcome all of you who are joining us by television, those of you joining us at airjesus.com. Stay tuned for today's message. And I would like to read just a little humor that I came across this week. Um, these are some children's letters that they wrote to God. And it is quite a few of them, probably 50 letters or so. So I'll be reading portions of them over the next few weeks. This is the first time I'll be putting my jokes in a series. So, we, so we'll be doing part two, part three, part four of the same joke. <laughs> well, here's some, here's some letters that some kids wrote to God. Um, here's one that... that Larry wrote, Larry said, Dear God, maybe Cain and Abel would not kill each other so much if they had their own rooms. It works with my brother. <laughs> Mickey wrote a letter, she said, Dear God, if you watch me in church on Sunday, I'll show you my new shoes. Here's one that Nan wrote, she says, Dear God, I bet it is very hard for you to love all of everybody in the whole world. There are only four people in our family, and I can never do it. And here's one that Lucy wrote. Lucy said, Dear God, are you really invisible, or is it just a trick? Nan wrote, she said, Dear God, who draws the lines around the countries? Something to think about. Here's one that Norma wrote, she says, Dear God, did you mean for the giraffe to look like that or was it an accident? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the last one we'll, we'll do in this session. Uh, here's one that uh, Darla wrote. Darla said, Dear God, did you really mean do unto others as they do unto you? Because if you did, then I'm going to fix my brother. <laughs> Open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 5, the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Now don't miss the next few sessions now because we're going to share the rest of those jokes over the next two or three sessions. We'll do part two and part three of my, this is my new joke series, I guess. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. And let's read verse, we'll read verses 18 through 21. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 through 21. When you get there, say amen. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 18. Let's read together there. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just want to uh, speak from verse 20 there, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just want to use as a subject today a grateful heart, having a grateful heart, a grateful heart. Um, to live with a, a, a grateful heart really changes the way you live in so many different ways. I actually heard a gentleman on television just today 
and he had received an organ from an organ donor and this I, I can't remember, I, I didn't catch which organ it was that he received, but he was so grateful. He was so grateful. And he said this, he says, he said, I'll never look at life the same. And this is because he was so grateful. And he said, and now, he said, now I cherish life as a gift. I cherish life as a gift. And so it just changed his whole way of thinking, his whole way of looking at everything in life. He now received life as a gift. And in other words, he, he was living with a grateful heart, living with a grateful heart, thankful, because he understood that it was just the grace and the mercy of God, the goodness and kindness of somebody's heart that he was alive. And it was a gift. And life is so precious and so valuable. And it was, it was a gift given, a gift to be received, a gift to be celebrated, a gift to be appreciated. And I think we all should stop and realize that life is a gift. It is a gift. It is so precious. Folks, I'm telling you, you can be here one moment and you can be gone the next moment. Life is a gift. It is so precious. It is so precious. And we ought to treat life as a gift and always live with a grateful heart for this gift of life that has been given to us. Notice in, in Ephesians chapter 5, that verse that we read in verse 20, giving thanks always, always, always. See, this is, this is an attitude of the heart. This is not something you do one time or at certain times. Always signifies an attitude of the heart. It's having a grateful heart. That's the way you are all the time. Always, always. It speaks of uh, something that is continual. Something that is continual. You know Psalms 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. See, that's the sound from a grateful heart. I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And so this is something that you do in terms of being grateful and giving thanks to God for his grace and goodness and mercy. It's something that you do when you're on your knees. It's something when, that you do when you're driving. It's something that you do when you're cooking or cleaning. It's something that you do even at your computer at work. Something that you do, even if you're exercising or involved in recreation, to just uh, to stop at moments and just to give praise to God, to honor God, and to thank God for the blessing of life and for his goodness and mercy in your life. At every opportunity, just taking the time to, to count your blessings, that's having a grateful, grateful heart. There's something interesting I discovered. The word thank and the word think, they come from the same Latin root. So they come from the same root word, thank and think. And I think that signifies and says to us, if we would take time to think more, we will thank more. If we take time to think, you just take time to pause and to think and to reflect on the blessings of God, the goodness of God, and the mercy of God in your life. The more you think, the more you will thank. The more you think, the more you will thank. And then that verse there in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, giving thanks always. Notice it says, for all things for all things. There are so many things that we take for granted. We're to give God thanks for the big things, but we're also to give God thanks for the little things, or the things that we sometimes consider to be insignificant, things sometimes we forget, things sometimes we don't even realize the blessings of God. And so it's, it's, it's important to thank God for all things, the big things, the little things, the little things that happen in everyday life, little opportunities, little blessings, things that we 
take for granted because they happen so naturally and they happen so readily that we don't even recognize them as a blessing for God. But here's some little things. I jotted down some little things that we ought to, uh, you know, some things that we sometimes take for granted in our lives. Here's some little things I jotted down. You know, being thankful for being able to see, being able to see, being able to hear, being able to walk, being able to laugh, being able to eat. You know there are people in the hospital right now being fed by tubes who would love just to take one bite and to be able to chew and enjoy one bite of food. Being able to drink. What a blessing. And we don't realize these blessings until you lose them or, you know, until you are faced with the risk of losing them and then you realize how precious they are. I heard a story of a young man and he was, he was involved. Something had happened. I forgot exactly what happened. I think it was him playing football on his football team, but he, uh, he was injured and the doctors had told him that they would have to amputate his legs. Well, long story short, things ended up working out in his favor and he was able to keep his legs. You know what that guy said? He said every morning he thanks God for his legs. He said it never, that had never crossed his mind. He had taken his legs for granted, but when he was about to lose them, all of a sudden, he now realized the great value, the great blessing of just having your legs. My God, how many, when's the last time you just thank God for your legs? You just thank God for your arms and for your fingers and for mobility and to be able to see, to hear, to dance, to laugh, to drink, to talk, to love, to think, to sleep, to breathe. You ought to walk outside sometimes and just appreciate, give God thanks for the opportunity to take a deep breath slowly in and hold it and exhale. Oh, what a blessing it is to just be able to breathe a breath of fresh air. Then look up and marvel at the beautiful stars. Oh, man, what, you, you don't have no idea what a blessing that is to be able to see the stars and see the moon. We should be thankful over God's creation, over the simplicity of God's glory in creation. That's reason to give thanks and to have a grateful heart. We should be, able, we should be thankful for just the ability to use the restroom. Oh, what a blessing it is to use the restroom. You don't realize that until you can't. I talked to a young man, he said, he said, Pastor, he said, I haven't gone to the bathroom in over two weeks. And my whole system is backed up. And he said, now my body is breaking down and I'm in serious trouble. All because he couldn't go to the bathroom. Folks, it's a blessing to be able to go to the bathroom. I say hallelujah every time I go. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. In fact, I just went. <laughs> That's a blessing. We take that for granted. We take that for granted, but it's a blessing just to be able to use the bathroom, to be able to work, to be able to drive, to have a friend, to have family, to have people in your life. What a blessing. To have the ability to learn, to grow and to develop, the ability to share, Simple things, food, clothing, shelter. Hallelujah. Brothers of the word, when the voice of God is heard, brothers of the word, there's a word from God for everyone. Brothers of the word, because brother, you need the word. Brothers of the word. Brothers of the word.